Humans have been making weapons for as long as we've existed. Spears, axes, swords, bows and arrows, catapults, crossbows, muskets, machine guns, tanks, bombs, nuclear weapons. But what does the future hold for weaponry? What high-tech wizardry will we come up with next? Well, it might surprise you to find out that one of the most powerful weapons we could conceive is technically no more sophisticated than a modern rifle. A relativistic kill missile is just an extension of a kinetic weapon, where the power of the weapon comes from the kinetic energy rather than any explosive damage. Modern day examples include railguns and coil guns, which are forms of mass drivers. Using these weapons to bombard a planet has many advantages. Kinetic bombardment means you can deliver projectiles from a very high angle at a very high speed, making it extremely difficult to defend against. Also, these projectiles would not require explosive warheads, and are pretty much just big lumps of metal. The idea is that your projectile, or ammunition, is fired at some hypervelocity towards your target, and kinetic energy is the weapon itself. To calculate kinetic energy, we use this equation, which is half times the mass times the velocity squared. So as you can see, increasing the velocity has a much bigger impact than increasing the mass. Let's start with some simple examples. The medieval longbow imparts a force of 2,000 joules per kilogram. A modern day rifle round, 470,000. And a railgun, a whopping 4.5 million joules per kilo. But this is Earth-based weapons. We're talking about going into space. A satellite travelling in low Earth orbit imparts 32 million joules per kilo. The most commonly mentioned type of this weapon would be tungsten rods. Tungsten is extremely strong and has the highest melting point of all the elements at 3,600 Kelvin. It could be formed into 6 metre long rods, roughly the size of a telegraph pole. These would weigh about 9 tonnes each, or 8,000 kilos. It would be shaped to minimise air resistance and maximise terminal velocity. There's no electronics or explosives involved, which makes the device very simple, and it could travel around Mach 10, which is 3.4 kilometres per second. This would put out the equivalent power of 11.5 tonnes of TNT. So let's try and use some real world examples to visualize this. Going back to our rifle bullet, the energy from the impact of the rifle bullet would be around 12,696 joules. Now we're going to have to go up a couple of orders of magnitude in order to get our head around these numbers. Here we're going to use megajoules. A megajoule is a million joules, and your rifle bullet is 0 0.013 megajoules. Well, let's say we accelerated that rifle bullet up to Mach 10. Now you're putting out 0.18 megajoules. So how does that compare to our tungsten rod? Well, the increased weight of this projectile obviously has a big impact. And now we've made it to 47,000 megajoules. Pretty powerful stuff, but we're still not thinking spacey enough. A typical asteroid impacts the Earth at around 17 kilometers per second. So let's feed these numbers into the magic formula. Using our tungsten rod, suddenly we've increased our yield to 1 million megajoules. Now, before we get onto the relativistic bit, there's a few other impacts we need to know about for comparison. And in order to understand these big numbers, we're going to have to up the scales again. Our tungsten rod traveling at asteroid speed is 1,100 gigajoules, which is 1.16 terajoules. And now we can nicely compare it to Hiroshima, which had the energy of 63 terajoules. Now we're going to move up another three orders of magnitude to petajoules, which is basically a quadrillion joules. In 1908, a large explosion occurred in northern Russia. This is called the Tunguska event, and it's generally attributed to the airburst of a meteor. This event flattened 2,000 square kilometers of forest and put out 17 petajoules of energy. This is thousands of times more powerful than the Hiroshima bomb. Okay. We're about to get relativistic. Things are gonna get freaky. So here's our tungsten rod and we're gonna whack it up to 1% of the speed of light. Now the impact from this weapon gives out 36 petajoules, which is twice that of the Tunguska impact. Being able to fire hunks of metal at this ridiculous speed would have a devastating impact on a planet's surface, being able to wipe out entire cities. And aside from the delivery mechanism, the warhead itself would be very simple and easy to make. The next thing we can compare it to is Tsar Bomber, which was the most powerful nuclear weapon ever created. It was tested in 1961 and put out an enormous 210 petajoules of energy. So how do we compete with that? Well, all you gotta do is fire your tungsten rod at 2.5% of the speed of light and you get 225 petajoules. 
But these are rookie numbers. Let's dial this up. At 50% the speed of light, our tungsten rod is putting out 90,000 petajoules. Remember, that's 90,000 quadrillion joules. And at 90% the speed of light, 291,000 petajoules. This is an unfathomable amount of energy, and it's hard to say exactly what the impact would be on the Earth's surface. Travelling at such high speed, there's a good chance the impact would penetrate deep into the Earth. And remember, we're only dealing with 9 ton lumps of metal. If we ever figure out how to chuck asteroids around, then we're going to be able to do some scary amounts of damage. So let's look at an example we're all familiar with. The asteroid that killed the dinosaurs. It's estimated that this was an 11 to 81 kilometer asteroid, weighing around a trillion tons. It made a crater 150 kilometers wide and 20 kilometers deep, with the power of billions of Hiroshima bombs. And you can see here the resulting energy of 131 million petajoules. So whilst our space-based weapons may pack a lot of punch, we're not quite at the level where we can send a load of species to their extinction. Before we go, it's worth considering a popular trope in science fiction of the planet-killing weapon. It's estimated that the destruction of Alderaan in Star Wars would require 10 to the 38 joules of energy. That massive long number there is 100 undecillion joules. You've probably never even heard of an undecillion, and why would you? It's just a crazy number. In order to make a relativistic kill missile that would destroy the Earth in the same fashion, we'd need a pretty big warhead and quite a lot of speed. To use an example, we could use the moon. We'd have to fire it at 20% of the speed of light. That'd do the job. And at that sort of speed, it would only take 6.4 seconds to drop out of the sky and totally obliterate us. So there we go. Relativistic kill missiles are a scary and dangerous weapon. But it's good to know that the planet's probably not going to get obliterated anytime soon.